Welcome to section 12.6. In this section, we're going to be looking uh, just briefly at um, some more 3D surfaces um, that we can encounter and work with throughout the semester working um, on calculus in 3D. Um, so this is cylinders and quadric surfaces. So the first example we're going to look at here, sketch the graph of the surface Z equals X squared. So first thing to notice in this equation, Z and X have a direct relationship. Y is not mentioned here. Now, the kind of faulty assumption that a lot of people make when you see a variable does not appear in an equation is to assume that the variable is zero or nothing because it's not there. But really, it's almost exactly the opposite. Um, because the variable is not specified, it can be anything. It is unrestricted um, to just one value. Um, so y is not specified. So it can be anything. So, this means the graph will have the same shape, but it can change up and down every y value that we have. So, let's look at what happens for a specific y value. So, when y equals 0, for example, here we are in the xz plane, because y is 0. So when y is 0, we're in the xz plane, z equals x squared. This is a parabolic curve. So z equals x squared, where x is the input, z is the output. So we get something like this, right? Just a typical parabola, typical parabolic curve, um, but with the x and z axes, not x and y. So this is what it looks like at y equals 0. That's also what it would look like at y equals 1, because it's the same curve, and the y value doesn't change anything. It's the same curve at y equals 2, at y equals 3, 4, etc., etc. So for all values of y, this is the shape that we get. So if we kind of transplant this onto this 3D surface here, so x, z plane, we're going to have our parabolic curve kind of right there. So that's like this one. And then if you go up to the next value, I mean, technically, it's at every value in between also, but just for the sake of argument, something like that. And then you go up to, you know, the next one. And you get something like that. And you just keep going. And you keep going and going. And technically, it goes on forever. And let me clean this up a little bit. So we've got that one right there. Something like that. You can see, like, everything in here is filled in. There we go. So this is the shape that we're getting. This is our surface here. Okay, so this looks like a parabola that's just been stretched along the y-axis, right? This is something we would call a parabolic cylinder because um, it does have that general cylindrical shape, but it is a parabola instead of like a circle. So this is the surface we would get. If we consider a couple different equations, identify and sketch these surfaces. So... If we look at part A for this one, this first equation should not look that unfamiliar to you. So 
we got x, y, z. Because this equation in 2D, so when you're in the x, y plane, this is a circle, right? x squared plus y squared equals 1 gives us a circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. That would be down here, right? In the xy plane, that would be somewhere. Somewhere down there would be a circle. However, because we're working in 3D, it's a little bit different. So notice here that z is not specified. So the shape is still a circle, but the z value can be anything. So that means you take that circle for z equals 0, z equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., etc., etc. Just trace out like those infinitely many circles in both directions. And in 3D, we end up getting a cylinder. And this is like a proper circular cylinder that we get. So that would be something like this. sides here. So that would be our circular cylinder of radius 1. So each of these radius values is 1. Now if we look at part B, x, y, z, Notice the relationship here is the same, but not with x and y, but rather with y and z. So we're not looking x squared plus y squared equals 1. We're y squared plus z squared equals 1. So this one is also a circle. But instead of it being centered around the z axis like this cylinder was. Oh, why did I say circle? Uh, it's also a cylinder. also a cylinder, but instead of being centered around the z-axis, this one is centered around the x-axis. So this one's going to be out here. Something like this. And same radius value, radius value of 1. Okay, so just because we're changing the variables um, doesn't mean that it's changing the shape. It might just change its position or its direction, something like that. Like with these circular cylinders, right? The x squared plus y squared equals 1 gives us a cylinder that po opens upward. And then y squared plus z squared equals 1 gives us one that opens down the x-axis instead. Now, what if we're trying to sketch something that we don't already have like an intuitive understanding for, or it you know uses all three variables instead of just two of them? Um, we have to come up with better ways of sketching those types of surfaces. And to do that, we're going to use what we call traces. So traces, also called cross-sections, are two-dimensional curves that give us information about a three-dimensional surface. So in essence, what we're going to do is we're going to take some two-dimensional curves in different directions and use those to kind of piece together what a 3D surface would look like. Um, and it's much more effective than just plotting points. Um, because if you plot points on a graph in 3D, there's no way to know exactly how they connect unless you already understand the surface. So we want to sketch the surface z equals y squared minus x squared. Um, so I'm going to plot some different z values here. So plot some values at different heights. So when z equals 0, we get 0 equals y squared minus x squared. 
So that's going to give us, if you add that over, we get y squared equals x squared, which gives us y equals plus or minus x. So we end up with we end up with two lines y equals x and y equals negative x and that's z equals zero. That gives us those curves there. Then let's look at z equals one. When z is 1, we get 1 equals y squared minus x squared. So we end up with y equals plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1, which is not maybe a shape that we're totally familiar with because we don't use it too often. But this is hyperbolic. So... Um, do it in green. It's going to be kind of like this. There's going to be a top half and a bottom half. Going kind of like that. And then let's look at z equals negative 1. So negative 1 equals y squared minus x squared. So we get y equals plus or minus square root of x squared minus 1. Uh, and you'd be amazed how just a simple minus can alter a graph. So this one, it's still hyperbolic, but this time it's actually opening up horizontally or sideways. So we get three different versions of this graph. So send this down here a little bit. Um, so we have it at z equals 0, at z equals 1, and z equals negative 1. So let me go ahead and give just kind of a rough sketch here of these. And I don't want to put them on too solid because we're going to kind of draw over them. But these lines are coming. The first line is the tough one because it's coming like out straight at us and away from us and then there's the one that cuts across like that then we go up one and then we have these hyperbolas opening up kind of up here and then down here Right? And you have to kind of orient yourself. Just pretend we're looking straight down on it from above, and that's what this looks like. If you're looking straight down on it, right? Positive y-axis right here, that's this. And then negative y-axis down here, that's this one. And then if we go to negative one, so we go down. Now they're opening up on the x-axis, so that's going to be kind of down over here. And then back that direction, trying to give it a little bit of perspective, since it's supposed to be down and away. <clears throat> now, these pieces by themselves don't necessarily give us the whole picture. You could do some more traces to figure out a more complete image of this. But if we just try to kind of just vaguely connect these pieces together... We get something that's going to look kind of like this. The back one is where it gets a little harder. And that one goes down, down there. And then if I go ahead and just... Fill in these edges here. You can kind of see, I know my drawing isn't that great. Um, we're we're going to look at it 
more closely in just a second. But basically, if we start here, we kind of we're kind of going up this way and this way along these these paths over here to the green ones, and we're going down into these ones down here and then down back that way as well. And that's giving us this surface right here. Kind of fill in those little pieces there. Which I know mine looks a little flat and kind of not great. Um, but we're not, I'm not asking you to draw this in 3D. This is just for your visualization purposes. Um, if we look at a better graph of it, which I already have right here, you can see here's the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. And if you look at it from these different perspectives, you can see up on the top, we've got those parabolas, uh, those hyperbolas up here. You can see the parabolas. Actually, let me turn this around. If we look on this perfectly vertically, I can do that. There we go. You can see in the x direction, you've got the two hyperbolas opening up sideways there. In the y direction, you've got the hyperbolas opening up vertically as well. So, and then if you look, um, you can see the lines, right? The y equals x, y equals negative x cutting across, making that x shape. So you can see all the pieces here. And then as soon as we connect them, obviously more smoothly than I did, you get this shape right here. Right? So that's what this surface is supposed to look like. And again, I'm not going to ask you to draw these things in 3D um, just to be able to like, you know, sketch the traces, be able to at least have some understanding of vaguely what these surfaces look like um, because we're going to be encountering them as we go throughout the semester. And there's my bad drawing again. Um, but now the next page... I'm just looking at a few examples here. Um, we're not even going to really do anything with these yet. Um, these are just ones that you're going to see, and we're going to encounter them over the course of the semester. Um, so up here, we've got the uh, ellipsoid. Um, we've got its equation here, but basically, right, it's an elliptical ball, essentially. You've got a cone, which cones in 3D do have a top half and a bottom half, traditionally. We have uh, paraboloids, which are parabolic curves that have dimension to them, so kind of like a cup or a bowl. Um, this one here is an elliptic paraboloid because it's got an ellipse instead of a circle. Um, hyperboloid, so it kind of opens up like that. Um, the hyperbolic paraboloid, so hyperbolic paraboloid right here. This is what we were just looking at, actually. So you can see there's the two there, there's the two kind of back there, and then it crosses through the middle. So the hyperbolic paraboloid is what we just worked on. And then a hyperboloid of two sheets. Um, you can see it's kind of like this one, but then it like splits in the middle because um, you've got the positives and negatives kind of move around a little bit, so. Um, so these are some just common examples of things we might encounter. Um, some more than others will work with um, cones quite a bit, paraboloids quite a bit, um, and maybe some hyperbolic paraboloids as well. Those are probably the most common ones that we're going to encounter. Um, but again, we're going to kind of work with them more as we're going um, rather than you know, try to dive into all of them all at once. So um, that actually brings us to the end of section 12.6. Um, so I will talk with you all very soon in the next section.